Help us listen to you. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit. Amen. Jake, if you want to come up, that would be fabulous. You've got your mic on, so you're good. I think so. Okay, we can hear you. That's great. Good. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so I put this together with Jake a couple weeks ago, and then he's honed it out actually pretty good. I'm pretty excited about what you're going to hear. The first question that Jake is going to talk about is, is kind of a little bit about his upbringing, where he has come from. And I'll let you take that. Well, I come from the booming metropolis of Jeffers. I, um, I always say nobody's ever heard of this town, but there's an always odd, an odd duck who's heard of Jeffers, so I'm not going to say that anymore. <laughs> and, uh, on the edge of the prairie, the little town that time forgot, where all the women are strong, all the men are good looking, all the children are above average. Um, I come from a very strong church family. My mom was uh, Sunday school superintendent at Trinity Lutheran in Jeffers. My dad was always ushering. Um, so really come from a church background where uh, whether I liked it or not, church attendance and of course Sunday school were mandatory. And you can only imagine the fights that were put up when I was a little kid about just not wanting to get up for that. Actually, my son will be at the 1030 service. He cannot imagine. He's got that first act. <laughs> so, um, growing up, the church was super important to me. Um, I had an uncle. I have an uncle who's a pastor. He's been an ordained Lutheran pastor for about 50 years now. And so he was a huge influence on my life. And so he got me active in our synod, which would be comparative to your districts. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Correct. so I became active in the uh, synod body, uh, serving on uh, the synod council, which would be like the bishop's cabinet. And I'm a nerd, so I served on their policy and procedures person. So I worked with constitutions and laws and things like that. And it was at that time that I really kind of, you know, this feeling that I'd had from childhood that I was going to serve the church in some purpose was really starting to gel with me. And then in the summer of 2014, I had a really fantastic opportunity to go to South Africa with our uh, mission partners in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Southern Africa. And that experience was pretty life-changing. In the words of Wesley, that was where I found my heart to be strangely warmed. Right. And, um, you know, for a long time I had tried to run away from a church calling. My uncle had always told me, Stay away if you can, but if you can't, well, then you know. And so that was at the time that I really began to feel this calling presence. Um, so, yeah. All right. Now I want to ask you a little bit. Your mother has gone through quite a battle yes. of illness at a certain point in your life, and that affected you also. Absolutely. So that was around the time my mother is, was and is a juvenile diabetic, um, and has had a myriad of health diseases over the years, breast cancer, uh, double mastectomy, um, and heart attacks, and now with a diagnosis of macular degeneration. Um, it was really difficult, and especially about the time when she was diagnosed with breast cancer. That was probably one of the hardest things I'd gone through. This is probably when right in the cusp of my teenage years, when a teenager really needs their parents, despite the fact that they would say otherwise, they need their parents. It was wonderful middle school years. <laughs> yes. And so that was, that was a really scary time for me. I was kind of put from relative to relative, and I really didn't know what was going on with my mom. And that, was, that made me very angry, it made me angry at God, made me lash out at my mom, my dad, my friends, and everybody. But I was very fortunate at that time to actually have some clergy in my life, a Catholic priest, a few Methodist pastor, my own pastor, and my uncle, uh, really take me under their wing and, you know, feel that calming presence of God. And that, more than anything, I think, has helped shape me into this wanting to be a pastor, a serving with others. Years. Exactly. And where are you now? We'll move to that question. Well, clearly, Bob, we're in Painesville. Yeah, yeah, right here. Um, <laughs> it's a great place to be. Yes, absolutely. As a child of the prairie, I absolutely love the lakes area. You know, we have these little ponds compared to these big lakes up here. Um, and so I live uh, on King Bee Drive, just recently purchased a home there, so I'll be settling here for quite a while. Um, I do work with Paul Bugby. This summer I'll be doing some work with uh, Cronus Ministries, and I'm excited about that. Um, and just keep busy doing lots of kind of odd jobs for Paul and whatever they need. And of course, I work at the U-Zone with these fantastic kids here. So Joan and Carrie get to put up with me. Sorry about that. Uh, 
But uh, yeah, and um, dating is the source of fascination for Bob and many other people in this community. I'm dating a girl from England. And so we plan a marriage in August of 2019. So that's kind of an interesting thing. And so that, um, you know, Christ has become a big part of our relationship. And her from a different faith, it's been exciting for me to challenge her in different ways and explore the love of Christ in ways that I never expected to be able to do as well. So, I have met Veronia. Yep. And she has been in our church, actually. Uh, she's coming back in August, That's right? That's the plan. Yeah. And eventually they are going to get married. That's the plan. Sure yeah. hope so. I yeah. mean. <laughs> in 19, 2019. Yep. And that is part of where you're going as we move ahead a little bit. Yes. There is a wedding coming up yes. for you, right? And that's part of it. But there's a little more than just a wedding for you and Veronia also. Absolutely. She's making a big move. That's for yes. sure. I'll let you answer that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, her plan is actually, you know, as much of an Anglophile as I am, as much as I love England, I can't leave my beloved Minnesota. And she, in all her craziness, her love for me, has decided that she is willing to move from London, England, to Painesville, Minnesota. Now hold on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I did talk to Veronia. I told her that the winters are a little different here than in London, okay? But she just said, no problem, very jolly winters, very jolly. Like, yeah, wait till January. <laughs> the problem with that is, um, in England, it does not get very warm for the summer. So she is convinced she is going to die in August. And I said, this is why we have air conditioners. <laughs> but she is coming here. You guys are going to be settling in after yep. the wedding at, at Bugby Hive. Uh, resort where your house is now mm -hmm. and what else is there for the future? Where do you expect to go? Well, hopefully uh, I would love to go into uh, coursework for a licensed local pastor. I feel really called to that program. It fits my schedule. It fits my needs and I would love to serve the greater church body and um, I'm really excited about that about this journey that's been a long time coming but I think I finally found where I feel that I'm called to serve. And we'll get back to licensed local pastor in just a bit. You have a verse besides Romans that you said. Very simple verse. Yeah, it's a, very, it's a very simple verse very in true. Uh, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, sometimes I don't have the best self-confidence. I'm not always the most positive person of myself. I can give compliments to people very easily, but myself, eh, not so much. But it's that verse that reminds me, you know what, Jake? You're, you're flawed. That's fine. But you can still do things. Amen. God helps me do things. And through him, I hope to be a good pastor to serve these great people. And I love the way that you speak to the fact that we don't actually give ourselves confidence. I think all of you can talk about that. When you pull that verse, I feel all about it. We all need to hear, especially as we come forward, we all need to hear, hey, God loves me. Or as we say, if you've been through a UEC and we talked about this. Anybody can go, but we always know, you, I, we are worthy. We are worthy of God's grace. Absolutely. And so you're going to spend a few days at annual conference this week, right? Yep. Or this month. Absolutely. With me. You're going to make sure I go, right? Yes. We're going to hold each other accountable, <laughs> people. There you go. And you're going to meet up with our superintendent. Yep. And then License to Preach is a course of study that you do if you do not choose the seminary track, you still can choose yep. a seminary track, but it puts it more on a fast track. And there are plenty of churches, even in our actual geographical area, um, no one's going there anytime soon, so don't get me in trouble with Pastor Bev. <laughs> but a church like Howick um, would be that type of licensed local pastor. And don't you get in trouble with me with Pastor Bev. No one's going there soon. <laughs> but something like that. Um, there's a lot of our smaller congregations that are looking for what we call licensed local pastors. And so um, Jake is going to be pursuing that course of yep. study probably in a year out. Yep, or so, probably. At least a year out or yep. so. And meanwhile, you want to get married. Yes. It's going to be a big deal, okay? That's what they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but you feel called. I do, absolutely. I ran away from this call long enough that, you know, it's time. It's time to quit running. Absolutely. We're pretty excited about that. We really are, Jake. 
And we do. We do. You know what? I do this because it's to God, not just to Jake. We just give it a hand to, to Jake for studio. Yes, it's going to be a neat journey. And I love the way that Jake said, if you feel called, and I mean this, I really do. I love the way I'm going to lift this up because I did it too. Um, I ran into the construction ministry where Donnie was there. I chased my dad and he said, quit running. <laughs> Run as far as you can. And if you feel like you're running, it's time to go after God and give it up. That's right. And even my dad said, quit running. Go be a pastor. So it's a, it's a good truth that you said. Thank you, Jake. Thank you. I'm going to lead us back Thank into you. an invitation. Jake's going to join me for communion in just a bit. But before we do that, let us close in prayer. And thank you, Jake, for what you've given and shared with us today. That was great. Gracious God, thank you for Jake. Thank you for the new beginnings of a friendship with Grace Church in this community also, Lord. And thank you for a call to ministry that he is choosing to pursue. That is a big deal. As we come forward, Lord, we are called today, all of us. We are all called to the priesthood of believers, Lord. As Paul reminds us, all of us are ministers. Let us come forward looking for that call in our life. It may be in a classroom, in a hospital setting, Lord, as a mother, as a father. It may be, Lord, in the church this week, in leadership in one way or the other, youth ministry. Or it may be on the construction field. It may be on the farm or the fields. Wherever it is, we are ordained people by God. Help us fulfill that call just today, Lord. And we'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. But as we come forward, Holy Spirit, help us fulfill that call in Jesus' name. Amen. As I invite us forward, the wonderful thing about the United Methodist Church Every single one of us are invited. We get the gift of the bells to invite us. I ask that as we come forward, we come forward by the way of the side walls. And then to the music of the bells and the piano, use this altar. If you're physically able, kneel, enjoy it, soak it up. It's a time to say, God, here I am. Here I am, Lord. As Jake reminded us, have our hearts strangely warmed. And then just return, and if you need to, stand, that's okay. Just return by the, the middle aisles. And if you need to be served in your pew, we will do that. We love that. But I invite every one of us forward. There's no barriers. There's no rites of passage. We come with the desire to follow Jesus Christ. There is a prayer that I want to lead us through. It will be on the screen. This prayer is not just about the Holy Spirit. It's about God's plan in our life. We call it our openness to the Holy Spirit and to the openness of God's sovereignty. Let the words come alive as we pray it aloud together to our Lord and our Savior. Let us pray together. Gracious God, I come before you today and I know that you love me and that you have a plan for my future. As I wait expectantly upon you, may I never be jealous of how you are blessing others around me. Because I know my time is coming. I will continue to walk in a worshipful joy of you daily. Even though things may not look the way that I want them to. In the natural. I believe that you have a beautiful future. And reward for me. May my hope and expectation grow more and more each day. As I look to your salvation and deliverance, I love you, Lord, and I wait in expectation on the fulfillment of your promises and all the prayers that I have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Silently and prayerfully, let us listen to God's invite.
Gracious God, we come before you on this Sunday in May, after a long winter, a spring Sunday. The windows open, we come to your altar. Help the windows of our souls be open for you, Lord, because we want to know we are forgiven. Do not let the evil one hold us back in Jesus' name. Let us know, Lord. Not only do you have a plan, we are forgiven, we are worthy, and we are blessed with your grace beyond belief. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I'm going to ask my communion servants to come forward.